My name is Michael McGonigal. I'm the Director of Trauma Services at Regions Hospital, which includes the Level 1 Adult Trauma Center and the Level 1 Trauma Center for Children. Last week, there was an anhydrous ammonia spill in Randolph, Minnesota, and I produced this video, which I hope will help you figure out what to do if something like this happens near you. This brief video will tell you everything you need to know about anhydrous ammonia. The reason that I am putting this together is that uh, if you live in Minnesota, you live in the Randolph, Minnesota area, you probably realize that there was a leak of anhydrous ammonia that took place on Wednesday, December 8th. And there were uh, a lot of people who were exposed to some of the gas and uh, numerous schools were evacuated and a, a fair number of people proceeded to emergency departments for further evaluation. And so I wanted to provide a little instructional video so that uh, people who are curious could learn a little bit more about what was going on. So I'm really going to break this into three different parts. First of all, what is anhydrous ammonia um, and what makes it a problem? Why is it an issue when people are exposed to it? And then finally, and probably most importantly, I'll be talking about what should you do if there is a leak in your area. Well, anhydrous ammonia is a very common chemical. It is a pure and concentrated version of ammonia gas. It's used for a lot of things, and you will find it in the upper Midwest, since these tend to be agricultural areas. It's used by farmers as a type of fertilizer, and this is probably the most common use in those areas. It's also used in cleaning solutions. Now, whereas anhydrous ammonia is specifically pure ammonia, which is liquefied and very cold, uh, cleaning solutions may uh, range from industrial solutions, which are very concentrated, to your basic household ammonia solution, which is just a very small amount, a few uh, percent of uh, ammonia gas dissolved in water. It's used in the manufacture of other chemicals that need nitrogen or ammonia compounds uh, included within them. The unfortunate thing is that you can also find this in your community even if you don't live near a chemical plant, even if you are not in an agricultural community because it is a key ingredient in manufacturing methamphetamine. And this is not something that is done in your typical chemistry lab. If you look at the example here on the screen, this is a meth lab that was set up in someone's bedroom where the equipment is just kind of scattered around on the uh, uh, t the top of a dresser, there's junk on the bed as well, and as you can imagine, if you are using anhydrous ammonia in a situation like this, the greatest of care may not be used, and it's uh, uh, very easy for some of these chemicals to get away from the people who are trying to manufacture meth. Why is it dangerous? Well, it is pure ammonia. Now, ammonia is normally a gas at room temperature. The only way to be able to uh, transport it and provide it in larger quantities is to condense it into a liquid much like you do with propane. And in its liquid form it has to be at least 28 degrees below zero. So it's very cold and so it's kept in tanks that are similar to propane tanks and it's transported like that. The problem is because of the chemical nature of it and because of its temperature it does several things. Most importantly, it draws water from skin and other body tissues, so it's an extreme drying agent. When it combines with water from human tissues, it forms a very, very strong alkali, which then burns those tissues. It's, it's exactly like coming in, in contact with lye. And because of the extreme cold temperature, it freezes the skin as well. So you kind of get a double whammy with a freeze and a burn at the same time. Now, this is what happens when it's on the skin, but you have to realize that if it gets inside of you, if you breathe it in, you have moisture all the way down your windpipe into your lungs, and the same effects can occur if it's inhaled. The same effect occurs if it comes in contact with the surface of your eye, which is also moist. So this is a, a very dangerous problem. So if there is an anhydrous ammonia spill or leak in your area, what should you do? Well, first of all, find out what your local authorities recommend regarding staying in your home. Most of the time, the safest place to be is inside your home with the doors closed, the uh, ventilation systems off, 
and closed so that you can uh, keep using the same air that's within your house. If you have been exposed, you need to be able to figure that out, and I'll talk about that a little bit next. And if you have been, obviously, then you do need to seek some kind of medical care. So first, what should you do? The first thing is, don't use your home phone. Since this does tend to happen in smaller communities, the authorities may be using calling systems to call all of the residents in the affected area to give them instructions. So don't use your home landline phone. Uh, local authorities will be trying to contact you. They may, new, may, they may do it by radio and news stations, so keep your televisions on, keep your radios on. If you do need to, to use a phone, please try to use your cell phone, although realize that in situations like this, if lots of people are trying to make cell calls, it may overload the stations and you may not be able to get through. Also, have a look outside the window to see if the air is clear. If you are outside of any clouds of um, ammonia gas, then you are much safer than obviously if a cloud of gas is heading towards your house. So stay in your house, but find out from your local authorities what the specific instructions are. Next, determine if you've been exposed. The most obvious exposures and the most common ones are just uh, breathing uh, somewhat increased concentrations of the gas and usually what this will do is cause burning in your eyes, nose, and throat. It's a little uncomfortable uh, but it's not uh, horribly dangerous. If you have actually gotten this uh, compound sprayed onto your skin or has come in physical contact with you then that's usually pretty obvious because there are freeze injuries and, and potentially burn injuries. One of the most important things to recognize is that nausea is usually not a sign of exposure the uh, odor of this substance is pretty strong. It's like your household cleaner ammonia, but much, much stronger. And just that strong odor can cause nausea, but it is not necessarily a sign of exposure and is not uh, a reason to specifically go to the hospital. If you have significant burning of your eyes, nose, and throat, or if you've been exposed, it's actually on your body somewhere, then you must get to the hospital. How do you do that? Well, Obviously, you need to get there, and you need to get there in the safest possible way. So if it is safe to be outside, and this is what you determine by listening to your radio or getting word from the authorities, you can ride in your own car. If, however, it's not safe and you are being told to stay in your own home, then call 911 for transport, 911 for transport and they will get you um, to the hospital in the safest way possible. Most of the care that you will require can be taken care of at your local hospital. It's usually just simple decontamination procedures, uh, which is usually just washing with a lot of uh, water, and uh, then uh, things will be fine. However, if you do have a more serious exposure, you may be transferred to a hospital that has more advanced decontamination capabilities or actually a burn center, especially if you have uh, skin or eye contact. If you would like to get some additional information on what this stuff is and what to do about it, your local fire and emergency medical services agencies will generally have this information, so you can contact them to obtain it. The state of Minnesota, um, the Agriculture Department, actually maintains a, uh, a fairly large portion of their website, which has detailed information about it, um, and so you can use the link that you see on this screen. You can get a printable copy of the slides that I've uh, discussed here. These are at the trauma blog and at the uh, address that I've given here, www.regionstrauma.com. And if you would like to uh, follow my posts on Twitter, I've given you the information here. The blog, once again, is uh, presented. If you want to follow on Facebook or you use LinkedIn, I've given the information for that as well.